today we celebrate the epiphany of the Lord. We celebrate the manifestation or the revealing of God's glory hidden in the frailty and vulnerability of a mere infant to the nations of the world. The wise men from the East who we encountered in today's gospel from Matthew represent the nations, the Gentiles, who are all called to and experience God's salvation, just like the Jews, from whom salvation comes. God's salvation that is brought to fulfillment through the birth, life, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Savior of humanity. Today, too, we celebrate and launch the 50th anniversary of Jesuit presence in Ghana in the Africa Northwest province. And how providential it is that this launch coincides with the epiphany of the Lord, God's revelation to the nations of the world. How auspicious, how propitious, even perhaps how suspicious it is too. I thought by now you'd be smiling. I'm giving you all the English I have learned as a Jesuit, and you are still the St. Ignatius. Did you hear what I said? How auspicious, how propitious, and perhaps even suspicious too. Yet our gathering as Jesuits in such an impressive manner this morning, with others following and celebrating with us online, is another indication of how God looks favorably upon us, notwithstanding our many sins and weaknesses, calling us to serve under the banner of the cross with a promise to be favorable to us, not only in Rome, but wherever God sends us for God's greater service and glory. From this day that we have heard proclaimed to us that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men arrived from the east. We also recall that on a Sunday just like this, on September 29, 1974, a wise man arrived in Ghana, having been missioned to our shores from the east, that is to say, east of Ghana's borders where Nigeria is located. Nigeria was and remains the headquarters of the current Jesuit province of Northwest Africa and was at the time an apostolate of the New York province of the Society of Jesus. To the praise and glory of God, this wise man is still alive today, Reverend Father Patrick Joseph Ryan S.J. To God's glory then, let us give God a full round of applause in thanksgiving to God for that moment and for the life and mission of this man Pat Wright. Please, a good round of applause to God for that moment. Yes, indeed, on a Sunday, September 29, 1974, we arrived, arriving from the east, a wise man, Pat Ryan. Although preceded by other Jesuits, such as the German Johannes Hoffinger, who as early as 1954 conducted workshops on catechetics in Ghana, and others who visited sporadically from 1968 to 1974, Father Pat Ryan was the first Jesuit formally sent on a long-term mission to Ghana in 1974. It is this original moment that we, the Jesuits of the Northwest Africa province, are marking this year and launching today. The biblical wise men from the East came bearing gifts. Thus we heard proclaimed to us a short while ago that then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So too, over these five decades of Jesuit presence in Ghana, the wise men, whose pioneer was Father Patrick Ryan, having found Christ incarnate in the various peoples of this nation called Ghana have continuously offered Christ many and diverse gifts 
from the treasures of themselves as unique companions of Jesus and the treasures of the entire body of the society of Jesus. Yet even in this variety of Jesuit gifts to Christ, Christ who plays in 10,000 places, lovely in limbs and lovely in eyes not his, to the Father through the features of men's faces, to quote the British Jesuit poet Gerard Manley Hopkins. These gifts of the Jesuits, personally and institutionally, may still be encapsulated in the same gifts of the Magi, the same three gifts of the Magi. And let me see if you are conscious. What are the three gifts? The first one, I can't hear you. I can't hear you still. Gold, the second one. Frankincense, the third one. Man. Gold representing the dignity of royalty. In tree we say, Odishye. We are Odishye. Frankincense exemplifying the praise, reverence, and service to God offered by priests. And myrrh, witness to the mortality of humanity that is redeemed by the salvific actions of Christ in the Paschal Mystery. The offering of gold, symbol of the dignity of royalty by the Jesuits, has been mediated principally through education. Through what? Have you had breakfast? Me, I haven't, but I'm still speaking. I can't hear you. Has been mediated principally through what? Education. And specifically, formal education at all levels. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Beginning with tertiary level education. And with a pace setting Pat Ryan, the Jesuits in Ghana have taught and indeed still teach at two of our public universities. Thus, what Father Ryan began in September 19, 1974 at the University of Ghana, Legon, teaching comparative religion and Islamic studies is linked in part to the current mission of one of our brothers seated at this sanctuary today. None other than Reverend Father Enyeribe Ogu Esquire. May I crave your indulgence, counsel? Please rise. What Pat Ryan started in 1974 continues in the tradition of Father Enyeribe Ogu, who is teaching as a guest lecturer in international law at the same University of Ghana. Similarly, the tradition of Jesuits teaching at the University of Cape Coast undertaken not only by Father Ryan, but also by Father Raymond Adams, the first superior of the Jesuits in Ghana, who taught sociology and anthropology at UCC, University of Cape Coast, is today maintained by our brother and our former priest in charge of St. Ignatius, none other than Father Raymond Chigedia Tangonyere. Please give him a... Father Raymond, may I crave your indulgence to stand so that we can see you? Father Raymond says no. And you know that is Father Raymond, isn't it? And yes, the Jesuits through Father Michael Schultheis continue this tradition of establishing and contributing to tertiary education. Father Michael Schultheis was instrumental, pivotal in starting the Catholic University of Ghana. Speaking of the secondary level education, I will only recall one of my conversations with one of Accra's auxiliary bishops, Most Reverend John Cobna Lewis, who mentioned always with deep fondness and appreciation the tutelage he received at St. Augustine's College from the hands of Reverend Father Ugo Nasironi who taught him advanced level chemistry. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, that one of our auxiliary bishops was taught by a Jesuit at the secondary school level at St. Augustine's College. Since then, many Jesuits have taught at the secondary school level here in Ghana. 
including our own provincial, very Reverend Father John Kobnagansa. Father, may I crave your indulgence? Who did his regency teaching at the same St. Augustine's College? Now, surely, having done so well teaching students at various secondary schools in Ghana, including St. Thomas Aquinas, Father Isidore Bonabom, Corpus Christi High School, Father Evans Adomako Apia, you will agree with me. Hello? Hello? You will agree with me, won't you? That it is time now for the Jesuits in Ghana to have their own school. True or false? I can't hear you. True or false? Yes. Thankfully, plans are far advanced for a Jesuit secondary school in Ghana to be known as the Campion Jesuit College, named after the erudite and saintly British Jesuit Edmund Campion. Yet for this to happen, we're it say, ma? Hello? Hello? It is true we should have a Jesuit school. True or false? I can't hear you. It is true we should have a Jesuit college. True or false? Yet for this to happen, we Jesuits need two things from you, dear friends. P and P. The first P are your prayers. Do you assure us of that? Thank you. You have assured of us that, of that. The second P, pecunia. Pecunia is the Latin word for money. Do you assure us of that? Hey. You said yes for prayers. Say yes also for pecunia. Prayers and pecunia. Yes. Yes. We need your prayers and your money. L'argent. Kudi. Sika, and I'm sure that when that happens, when you support us with your prayers and with your money, one of the priests designated president of Campion Jesuit College in the person of Father Emmanuel Gwede, please, Father, please, yes, will be very, very delighted. I need not say more about how the offerings of the Jesuits of gold to Christ Alive in Ghana has occurred at the primary level. You are witnesses of this yourself here at St. Ignatius Church, your own parochial school, St. Ignatius of Loyola Catholic School. Yet before I conclude on the offering of gold that amplifies human dignity, obtained through education, provided by the Jesuits in Ghana, how can I forget seminary education or seminary formation? And in this regard, who else personifies this more than the truly admirable and genuinely indefatigable Father Donald Joseph Hinfi, also known as Prof, or as the seminarians will say, right there. Again, to God's greater glory, may I kindly request that we give a massive round of applause to God. A massive round of applause to God for the life, for the life and mission of Father Hinfi. In more recent times, the offering to God by the Jesuits of gold has been in proclaiming the inalienable dignity of human beings. And that is being carried forward through the Arupe Jesuit Institute established in November 2018. Several Jesuits, including yours truly, myself, have been involved in presenting this offering. Among the Jesuits include Father Cornelius Apili, who was here with you, Father Collins Obidiaga, our very own Mr. Vincent Mumuni, our brother on the sanctuary, and your former assistant priest in charge, Father Evans Adomako Apia. The offering of frankincense, of priestly worship, in praise, reverence, and service of God has been offered by the Jesuits in Ghana principally through two means. Our retreat center, Flavor House, 
opened in April 1990. The tradition of retreat work spans many decades and has, been, and has witnessed the involvement of countless Jesuits. In our day, it is being carried forward not only at Clever House, through the work of some of our companions here, like Father Gustav. Father, can we see you indicate? Yes. Father Peter Ehimanri, also known as JP. Father Raymond Tangonyiri, and of course, Father Donald Hinfi. This tradition of showing the way to Christ is continuing not only at Flavor House, but today is being taken further afield through the work of Father Tim Bangwen, who, being missioned recently to Kumasi, is showing the way to God and offering that service, that oblation, that is of priestly significance at the Center for Spiritual Renewal in Kumasi. The other way in which we have and continue to offer this frankincense is through our parishes, the parish outreach, the ch churches and chaplaincies we have and continue to administer, especially for the Archdiocese of Accra. Beginning in 1999, with none other than the provincial superior, as the first pastor of St. Anthony's Catholic Church, we have been involved in pastoral ministry in the Archdiocese of Accra. For over two decades now, we have provided pastoral care at St. Anthony Catholic Church, Nungua, St. Ignatius, St. Ignatius, St. Ignatius, Our Lady of Perpetual Help at uh, Nungua Baria, Regional Maritime University, and now at Regina Celli. We have been consistent in showing the way to God in the spiritual exercises to many priests, religious, and lay faithful, and have provided quality pastoral care. In this, the Jesuits in Ghana have offered frankincense to Christ, present and alive in Ghana. Finally, the offering of myrrh, the witness to mortality that is redeemed by Christ. Jesuits have spent their lives in the service of God's people in Ghana to the point of death. You know them. I know them. We mourn them at the same time we celebrate them. We remember then Father Hendrik Van Torre, who for a long time taught at the seminary in Pedu. We remember Father Raymond Adams, the first superior appointed in 1986 who gave his life, tragically, for the Society of Jesus, and who we remember as our first superior. We remember Mr. Alexis Dogley, a young scholastic who gave his life also for the Society of Jesus. More recently, we remember with deep affection Father Isidore Bonabon, who, till this day, the University of Cape Coast honors for the life he gave, not only as an academic, but also as a pastoral person, reaching out constantly to the students. We remember Father Michael Schultheis, who, as I mentioned, started the Catholic University in Ghana. In these ways, the Jesuits in Ghana have offered themselves their mortality, the very gift of themselves, for the praise and service and worship of Christ, alive and active in Ghana. In doing so, the Jesuits have only been following the model, the ideal pointed out to them by St. Ignatius of Loyola, our founder, who in the spiritual exercises enjoins on us at the end, at the fourth week, to say, take Lord, my liberty, my memory, my entire will, all that I have and I possess, I present back to you. When they do this, they do it not alone, but with all of us. We are invited to join in that offering of the Jesuits, of giving of ourselves, the gift of ourselves, the gift of the institution, in gold, 
frankincense and myrrh in the manner of the wise men from the east. And so to conclude this homily, I'll ask us, the choir, who have been most forceful, I'll ask the choir to play for us and we all sing that beautiful song that we sing at Epiphany. We bring our gifts, but above all, we bring ourselves. The Jesuits, through thick and thin, in human weakness and frailty, have offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, but above all, you don't know the song. You don't know it. So when you mom and your father bakasa, you pam na. So my dear friends, just as the Jesuits have offered these gifts, so also in doing so, we invite you to join us to offer our own gifts to God and ultimately the gift of our very self. When we do this, we shall proclaim that Jesus is truly the Lord, the Savior of the nations, which we celebrate on this Epiphany Day. And so now, reflectively, let us pause and have this song that ushers us into the giving of ourselves, just as the Jesuits have done so for the past 50 years in Ghana, in the Northwest Africa province, to God's greater glory. Amen. <laughs> 